Well, good morning. We're here in Florida, Bama. This time we're going to talk about alternate energy systems, just basic uh, AE systems and how they're going to work out for the home setter, for the survivalists and such. A uh, couple of things that, uh, just as a little uh, info right at the beginning, we are videotaping at a, uh, a uh, friend's location. There's going to be some, just like in some of the other videos, some funky camera angles and things like that. Uh, we're just, we're here at a friend's invite. Uh, this is not something that, uh, you know, that we can help as far as uh, different camera angles. We are going to respect them and it's their property. So uh, you're going to get one shot of the PV array, which is what you got already. Uh, any further shots of that would uh, would uh, be keys to identify the location and such. So that's all, unfortunately, I can give you as far as that goes. Uh, Alternate energy has a has a lot of good uh, benefits for the homesteader or for the survivalist. Um, folks often want to overlook that sort of thing, go right to, you know, well, I'll just have uh, oil lamps and things like that. Well, there's really more of a of a uh, logistics trail with things like that. And besides, who really wants to go back to 18th century living if we don't have to? By all means, those should be backups and such. Uh, you know, and a lot of people that even have power systems like this and larger ones, and this would be considered more or less a medium-sized uh, power system, uh, you know, also maintain those as backups and such. But, you know, who wants to, uh, to live and read by, uh, by oil lamps all the time? One thing that's going to be common to any um, survivalist's uh, energy system is going to be a backup, uh, backup power source. And uh, kind of hard. Let's see if the kind of dark in here. Let me see if I can get the flash or some sort of light and such on here. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is any of your your true alternate energy sources, be they uh, PV, you know, photovoltaic, solar panels, or uh, even even um, you know um, micro turbine, uh, wind turbines, or hydroelectric and such like that. There's a good chance that with a uh, high altitude EMP blast, it's going to knock those out. It's going to destroy the circuitry in it. Now, an old school diesel generator like this one here, and this is this is kind of ugly old Betsy here that Tom and Frank have at their place. But uh, the, these sorts of things are really going to keep it keep chugging along here regardless. So, uh, for the for the serious survivalists, what I recommend is you start you base your system around a generator. The other advantage of that is, of course. Most folks already have a generator uh, that uh, have been in this for a while, especially if you're living in Hurricane Alley and things like that to where, like I said, we're down here in Florida, Bama area, Florida, Alabama, Georgia area. And, uh, you know, that's something that, that uh, a lot of folks already have. Now, uh, this just happens to be a pretty big unit. This is a 12-kilowatt uh, uh, China diesel unit, uh, or now Hardy Diesel, I believe, is the uh, company name now. Uh, you don't have to start with something this big, a uh, three or 4,000 watt, uh, one of the smaller, like the Honda type generators and such like that. We'll get you started. Uh, it's just not going to put out the amount of serious power you're going to need, uh, which is going to mean you're going to have to run it longer than uh, you would for this to charge your battery set and things like that. I zeroed in just a second ago on the, uh, on the amp meter, or excuse me, not the amp meter, the uh, hour meter for this uh, particular gen set. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Frank and uh, and Tammy, they don't use this system, uh, or excuse me, this this generator all that much, except for EQ in their batteries and things like that. Their uh, their PV array that we showed you outside does pretty well for them. So uh, in the time they've been here, they've only put let's see, s roughly 74, 75 hours on this generator set. Uh, they probably should be using it a little bit more, just to uh, a little longer on their EQ charges and things like that. But sometimes they can EQ charge through the uh, through the charge controllers, and we'll explain all that in just a second. So if you're if you're looking for serious long term, you know stuff hits the fan or the end of the world as we know it type survival, I would start with a decent generator set, uh, preferably a diesel generator if you can, simply for the fact that diesel stores so much longer. <clears throat> uh, Frank had explained to me that in this tank here, which is one of the ones that they uh, that they have for their diesel storage. Most of this uh, fuel is from, uh, or excuse me, all of this fuel is from actually 1999. They treated it with uh, the product called PRI, the diesel version of it and such, and uh, it still chugs away just fine in this, uh, in this generator set. 
So uh, you, you'd probably never get that out of gas. You might get three, four years with a good uh, preservative like PRI and such, but you're, I doubt you're going to get close to a decade out of gas. So uh, the other advantages, of course, is, is diesel safer to store. It's not going to uh, have the potential to blow up and such that, uh, that gas does. Um, you know, with uh, homeowners policies and things like that, you might be able to get away with uh, storing diesel, whereas you might not been, a get, been able to get away with storing a, a, a large amount of gas. Also, typically a diesel engine will last longer than a gas engine will and such like that as well, too. And, of course, there's, uh, <clears throat> there's the possibility of running it on uh, various uh, waste vegetable oil type fuels and, and different biodiesel and different things like that. So it does offer you a little bit more advantages than a gas generator.